The movie begins with a police officer questioning a suspect at the Guantanamo prison's black sites. These websites are technically non-existent. He's begged for a tip to help them find their target by the CIA agent. He says they're going to take off his skin and kill his children. The Saudi intelligence wants to lend him out. After initially denying that he has no idea, he eventually gives up and informs them about Abu Ahmed. Subsequently, the CIA agent leaves the room and phones Ahmed, the Al-Qaeda courier. Pakistan's Peshawar, according to a news program, we will find Osama bin Laden, kill him, and dismantle Al-Qaeda since they represent the biggest threat to our security, even if Musharraf fails to kill him. The CIA office in Sondarab Tailung Reston, Virginia, becomes the new scene of action, where a team is looking for those responsible for the attack. Asian male Malik, who is driving a vehicle equipped with a camera, and Pasha, who is also in the car, approach four people who are drinking tea at a cafe. The man picks up the cigarette, approaches them, and requests a lighter. The target face is matched with the person's face by the CIA team. He places something in that person's pocket before exiting and waiting in the car. When the target exits the building and gets into a car, a CIA agent follows. They claim that the target individual works as an Al-Qaeda courier. The target departed Peshawar and moved in the direction of Abbottabad. As they were receiving instructions from the CIA, the two people followed him. A guy tells President Obama that they have a person who was an Al-Qaeda courier, but they are unsure if they are still in contact. In addition, there have been more airstrikes in the Helmand province of Afghanistan. The next shot showed three CIA officers walking into the bathroom. They talk about the rise in American strikes. Furthermore, they assert that Pakistan formerly accepted aid from other countries, supplied bases, and looked after Osama bin Laden. They think that killing bin Laden with a bomb in Tora Bora is the best course of action, but they need proof that he is dead. They want their DNA to match. Every more proof is also attached. Then, an army unit and a six-person SEAL team transporting two Afghan men to Kandar base while wearing head coverings. Joint Special Operations Command had issued the directives. The CIA is identifying the armed Afghan guys on the opposite side, but its cameras show no signs of weaponry as four people move in their direction. An Afghan guy and a lady in hiding moves on. They were halted by American soldiers. Another soldier requests that they search the Afghan guys and the woman who is with them. Army soldiers advise against using older people, children or women, to conceal explosives. They are reluctant to allow searches of their ladies. Suddenly, gunfire begins to rise from the mountains. The shot hits an American soldier, he collapses on the floor. They all set a fire on the mountain where the bullet came from. The troops spared him since his clothing was bulletproof. The CIA agents peered, but could see nothing out of that area. Resuming fire from the summit, the U.S. infantry scrambles to hide behind another hillside. They fire the shot in an attempt to kill the Afghan man firing from the mountain. Two Afghan boys are killed by an American soldier. Now that everything is apparent, they think they should move in with the Afghan family. One of them sets off the device that murdered D-Punch, the military guy, and destroyed the family in the interim. The relocation to a different location saw the arrival of more American servicemen from Afghanistan on January 26, 2011. When they get home, they proceed to the room where their children are sleeping and discover his wife there, who is in an abnormal state and is not wearing any clothing and is lying in the bed in a dirty house. His wife was in an inebriated state when he awoke her and led her to the bathroom. He understands that she did something wrong by being absent. The men who followed the subject in Peshawar come into focus. On January 26, 2011, they arrive to a home where a woman greets them and shows them her home's features regarding light, water, and everything else. The woman talks to them about the home in front of it and how she rented out the upper floor to someone else who works in a technology field. Women are informed by Malik that they have a video. On the other side, CIA agents are listening to the woman because they have cameras and other devices that link them to CIA agents. They move into the house the next day. They put cameras inside the house so they could see the exterior. In a different scene, the woman recounts all of Osama bin Laden's terrorist attacks, which claimed hundreds of lives. The six members of Team Six are seated in the cafe in the next scene, discussing how the elderly woman threw a D-punch. Mule enters and motions for the other teammates to follow him outdoors. Admiral McCravel must exact revenge for D-punch, he tells them. In front of the property, Malik and his companion Pasha broke into the house of a family whose children were homeschooled. They don't even take their trash outside or make phone calls. They believe they are housing eight military guys. 
The individual said that NRO satellites were constantly monitoring the property and that it was built with unique anti-aircraft defenses. One of the three primary alternatives presented by the CIA official is to conduct a joint raid with the host nation. The alternative is a helicopter strike. The senior official responds that the compound is made in a flood basin when someone inquires about the tunnel option. JDAM, or Joint Direct Attack Munitions, is the third possibility. But if the target is already dead within the facility, no one will be able to tell if he was there or not. They claim that they are still unsure about whether or not Osama bin Laden is present. Mule receives a call from the CIA informing him that his wife was killed in an attack. But he claims that finishing the objective and not getting even is his top priority. They relocate to Jalalabad, Afghanistan where Mule informs his squad that everyone is interchangeable and brings a dog for training exercises. When Stunner informs Cherry he has to go see the CO and asks to be the team leader, they get into a fight. Personal shit. Instead of throwing away the syringes, a CIA agent chose to deliver immunizations door to door. We get the sample so that the DNA can be matched to Layden's sister. Malik is recording the facility with a buddy. Gidri is in favor of vaccinations. They proceed to knock on the complex's door, which they eventually open, but one of their group members eventually ejects them. These days, the CIA uses facial and speech recognition. The lads on the squad are playing a game in the following scenario when the stunner enters and turns off the TV while admonishing them to take a break. He claims that we should concentrate on finishing the assignment and returning home safely. Christian, who is also a CIA officer, claims that they only need to deploy a JDAM strike since, in his opinion, doing otherwise will place their squad in an untenable predicament. The team member on video conference with their family in the other scenarios expresses on how much they miss them. They announce that they will go on a mission. To prepare for the operation on Osama bin Laden's hideout, they are conducting several training exercises, numerous shootings and other activities. Malik and Pasha follow the car as two ladies exit the complex. Wanting a better look, Malik remains with the women while they shop for groceries and household products. A man watches and records the women up close with his camera. When police found spy cameras and some firearms in the car, Pasha was also taken into custody. He is set free and his license is returned when an ISI agent shows up. He gets into the car and drives back. The CIA claims that the ISI is protecting someone on the premises, which is why their counterparts are pursuing our security officers. CIA threat analyst Vivian Hollins claims she has the idea, but is having trouble receiving approval, which irritates her greatly. Only 40 to 60% of the time could Osama be inside the enclosure. Both the president and the defense secretary continues to oppose the raid. Mr. Panetta supports the raid, and on April 28th at 7 o'clock, they eventually received approval for the operation. Stunner will also inform the squad about the raid that will take place tonight. The soldier in the army informs his group that Osama bin Laden's operation Neptune Spear is now being carried out in full. Osama appears as HVT and discusses his code name, Geronimo. He warns that while we will temporarily disable Pakistani radars, they must save the women's and children's. He commands his warriors to avoid being killed and captured. He claims that Al-Qaeda is our adversary because they do not fear death. He convinces his soldiers that they must contribute more to the battle than they do. They departed for the raid around 12th hour. Someone knocks on Malik's door. That was where someone in the American team had to have seen the raid. When one of the helicopters loses balance and falls, everyone gets out, lining themselves with the building's walls as it crashes and bursts through the front gate. Gul Ahmed al Kuwati, the courier, was killed by them. Pakistanis congregated near the compound. Since this is a coordinated security operation, they are encouraged to head back to their homes. al Kuwati's brother, Abrar al-Hamid, was the next casualty, killed by the army men. They opened a lot of doors but didn't kill any ladies or children. They met Amal, Mohammed Laden's fourth wife, and her daughter next door. Pasha and Malik were dealing the people of Pakistan and police comes there and asks what is happening inside. Pakistani jets are also coming to the point, but they are told to go back to their bases. Khalid, Osama's son, is also killed. Pasha explains to police that call was Osama bin Laden, whom they killed at last. The death of Garinimo is reported by Stunner to the CIA. Osama bin Laden, who was in charge of the killing of numerous innocent people worldwide, was assassinated in an operation, while President Barack Obama announces to the nation.
Mr. Panetta appreciates Mr. Holing as well, because she said this in a previous conversation. Obama thanks the intelligence personnel for all of their efforts in killing the target. He informs his followers that the justice meted out to the Al-Qaeda chief today may be said to be true. He expresses appreciation to army officers for their courage and commitment to their nation. Thank you for watching.